Alice the Queen, Nicki Minaj, and I'm in the mix with DJ Self and the whole Gwyneth team. I can see us in Atlanta right now. Right now. Acting brazy, tell a nigga pipe down. It must be the cash. Got my foot on the gas. Pussy on splash. Got your man on my jack. Yeah. App Store, Google Play. Download it for free. M Y G W I N I N. MyGwyneth.com. Go Louis, go Louis. Lance Unrivera is here as DJ Self, the Gwyneth God. As people are unfamiliar with you, could you could you just tell them your handle? Um, it's Lance Unrivera, the uh, infamous Lance Unrivera. Okay. <laughs> you can Google me. Okay. <laughs> That's it, Google, right? That's a word called Google. What made you take a liking into camera? You know, it was um, brought to my attention by the notorious Big before he passed away. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, he told me about Cam and he said, uh, you know, it's a, it's a kid from Harlem, um, that I'm really interested. I want you to sign him, you know, when big tell you sign somebody, you sign him. Mm -hmm. Um, unfortunately, yeah. unfortunately, um, big passed away and, um, they were shooting the, uh, the video, the locks, the tribute video, not missing you. Which one was it? Um, we'll always love Big Papa. We'll always love uh -huh. Big Papa. And um, I seen Cam and uh, Capo, and they were standing off to the side. And, you know, uh, Cam was like, Yo, um, what's up? I'm Cam. Mm -hmm. and I was like, <laughs> Okay. Yeah, Big told me about you. Mm -hmm. um, come see me on Monday. The ups and downs, was it? Easy. Um, back then it was hard because they artists didn't really know how to make songs. Okay. You know, they could spit all day. Like Cam could come in the studio and he could rap for hours. But it was like <laughs> I, mean, I can't sell that. <laughs> okay. Know, we gotta structure the songs and you know, it's interesting, you know, because people tell me about how hard Cam is with his artists and how much work he make them put in. I mm -hmm. was like Man, I used to make Cam go back in the studio. Cam probably had 10,000 records mm -hmm. before he came out with an album. Because I used to push him, you know, like, yo, that's not good enough. Mm -hmm. It's not good enough. And they used to be like, that's why he got so many styles. And, you know, he learned he was pushed to find his craft. Mm -hmm. You know, not just, it wasn't just about words. It was about delivery it was about you know cadence and flows and you know and then once he kind of honed that it was like from there he was like okay i got it i think his first album is the best album a lot of artists don't really you know to me nowadays it's just so much throwaway music but back then you know if you had a successful first album mm -hmm. the second album was the the one that stressed album artists out the most mm -hmm. because you know you had something to stand up to mm -hmm. you know because you know you put your heart into your first i heard jay-z say something about you know he put his whole life into his first album mm -hmm. you know what i'm saying so now you gotta start all over so you know big had a way to you know he was stressed out about it but he kind of figured it out easily you know i'm not gonna give a secret away on how he okay. did that but uh -huh. He was like, man, I got it, you know? And I was like, okay, you got it? You figured it out? He was like, yeah, it's no problem. What happened to Undeas, and why did it change to Entertainment? I kind of felt like, um, you know, Undeas was a company that me and Biggie started together, mm -hmm. and, you know, artists, um, it, it sort of was like his legacy, you know what I'm saying? And, and I kind of wanted it to be that, you know, and then it was... Um, at the time, Big also wanted me to sign Charlie Baltimore. Mm -hmm. And it was like, um, you know, so I kind of had a conversation with Kim about it. And, you know, she was still going through, you know, what she was going through at the time. Um, so I, I kind of followed Big's wishes in signing her. Mm -hmm. Um, you know, like Cam, you know, cause I, I, you know, whatever big wanted me to do, I did, mm -hmm. you know, to help his vision come through. So, um, it was just, you know, okay, Kim is, you know, she, that's her house. That's her, you know, her legacy, you know? So I kind of said, all right, let me go out here and try to create a new company for these new artists that big wanted me to sign. 
you know, so they'll get a real shot and not under the, you know, sort of like the, um, the legacy, you know, with big not being around, I didn't have any records on them, you know, so mm -hmm. it was, it would have been kind of hard to kind of use big name to kind of promote them or whatever and him not be a part of musically. Okay. You know, so I kind of felt like that they needed to create their own, you know, identity. You know, it was hard at the time because, you know, especially from my perspective, everybody was looking like, okay, I'm Big's dead. What are you going to do? Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? And I was like, you know, it's, it was never about me. You know, the music was the music. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? So, you know, um, I remember the Players Anthem record that you just played. Um, I, I was under pressure to deliver that record the first single, and I told Big, yo, go in the studio, and um, I mean, go in the booth and do the chorus, right? So he went in there, and he did the hook. Um, niggas, no, hip -hop. Uh -huh. <laughs> right, and so I said, yo, stop playing and do the chorus. He said, that is the chorus. And I sold five million singles off it, and I was like, I'm never questioning you about the music. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you give me the record, and I'm going to go sell it. Uh -huh. You do the music, <laughs> and I kind of, you know, put that pressure on all of the artists that I dealt with. You know what I'm saying? Like, you do your job, and I'm going to do my job, and we're going to get to the money. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? So it was all about the music. I wasn't worried about it because I knew Cam and Digger and Jim Jones and Freaky and Mace and old Dipset, all his Harlem dudes was not going to let Cam put out the wrong music. Okay. You know what I'm saying? Like, they was on him just as hard as I was. They kind of was supporting him, man, later for un. He don't know what he talking about. <laughs> this record is hot. And Cam was like, man, it ain't hot. Yet. Mm -hmm. It ain't hot. I used to call him like 65% rapper. All right, now you 66% rapper. Okay. <laughs> you know, I still don't think Cam is at 100% yet. Uh -huh. You know what I'm saying? I still think that he, you know, the closest, he, he got a little bit closer with the Kanye record. Uh, down and out. Down and out. I was uh -huh. like, okay. You about ninety seven percent. Okay, <laughs> you know what I'm saying. But I still, he still, he still got. He ain't at a hundred percent. And I'm only basing it off of what I think Cam got. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Not what I, cause I know. You know, I knew what. Okay, you. Oh, you don't got better. Really? Mm -hmm. I spent. We spending a lot of money in this. Oh studio. yeah. <laughs> uh -huh. You know, self. You was dear. We yes. put a lot of money into these kids fulfilling their dreams. And, mm -hmm. You know, they kind of, you know, and I kind of, everything that he did, you know, from Jim Jones to Jewels and the Dipset, you know, it was just a, a blessing to see it, you know what I'm saying, to be able to take it and, you know, run with it and create his own movement and, you know, and, and I believe in I believe in giving these kids an opportunity, but don't be selfish. My new model is if you got a selfish role model, show them a better one. Okay. You know, I'm, I live by that. You know, mm -hmm. later for these jokers, the guys who discard you and use you and take your brand and convince you. I told Kim, you sold a million albums before the Benjamin. Mm -hmm. You scanned. Mm -hmm. Don't let them convince you that the Benjamins made you hot. Mm -hmm. We scanned in the 90s mm -hmm. a million albums. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? So don't stop. You know mm -hmm. what I'm saying? So that's where we at with it. What's your relationship with Little Kim now? Um, It's actually a good one. You know, I, I went to Summer Jam. I had a good time with her and Faith. You know, I, I, I applaud them for, you know, kind of coming out and supporting Big's legacy and all that. You know, I kind of hear from through social media. So there's some online social issues. I, don't, I haven't heard the details, but me and Kim's always had a great relationship. All eyes on me. Uh -huh. Now, um... A lot of people were, first of all, did you see the movie? Yeah, I seen it. I thought that the filmmaker, Benny Boom's good guy, you know, he came up, you know, working with me in my early days. So, you know, he got his name because he used to be the Boom guy. Okay. <laughs> you know, he used to hold the Boom. But, you know, he did a great job as a filmmaker. I think that the actors did an, an amazing job. Um, I kind of feel like, and when it comes to Big and his legacy, the story, you know, everybody has their, and I don't take nothing away from people. Everybody kind of has their own story when it comes to Big. You know, okay. the janitor, the, the, the guy in the room. Like today, you know, each one of these guys in this room is going to have a, 
their own perspective of un being in the studio, having an interview with you, right? Mm-hmm. So you can't really take it away from them. But I, t- I'm mad about the inaccuracies. You know what I'm saying? Okay. Like, um, let me give you an example of, you know, big being in from the movie, mm-hmm. um, pocket and shot, um, riding up the elevator, the first when the doors open. They do this dramatic close-up shot of them making eye contact and Pac saying, you set me up. That never happened. Okay. Big never seen Tupac. I was with Biggie. He never seen Tupac. We went downstairs looking for Tupac. Mm -hmm. Mm-hmm. By the time we got downstairs, the police pulled us out with their guns drawn, made us get down on the ground, searched us. Mm -hmm. It never happened. (laughs) For you to embellish the story under the same okay this is really how it happened this is why it happened and it's all based on a lie you know Mm -hmm. what i'm saying it it didn't happen you know what i'm saying like the way it's been portrayed it didn't happen so every time biggie sort of came on screen it was inaccurate to me so i kind of was a little bit thrown off by it you know what i'm saying but overall i think the actors were great um a lot of people say, man, aren't you being so critical? And I said, well, I'm a filmmaker. And it was interesting because the story that they told just wasn't that interesting, his life. I knew it was interesting, but it was, they tried to tell a love story. Mm-hmm. I don't think that they really connected the dots the way it should have been. Um, I think that the way, the reason why, Straight out of Compton was dope because Dre and Q was there like, nah, that ain't happen like that. Okay, uh-huh. Just didn't happen like that. I think that if Tupac was here, he would have told a different story. I think that if Biggie was alive, he would have told a different story. Um, you know, me and Hood was just talking about, you know, me. And it was like, yo, un, you should tell the real. And I was like, yeah, you know, they, they checking for me. But it's just the inaccuracies that, you know, everybody has the story wrong and it's not even wrong it's just people's interpretations of when they was in the room okay you know what i'm saying and i tell people you wasn't there you was don't you know you okay you you tell a story about big and tupac but i was in the room you know what i'm saying like when he heard faith in tupac he cried like a baby. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? Like, if you want to tell it, tell it. Mm-hmm. But you know what? No one body was there. I tell people all the time, Nino, ask Nino, he was there. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? You know, Big said it in the round. Ask Nino, he know. Mm-hmm. Every time you was in the room, C's was his man, but Nino was in the room. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> like, it was, I come in the room, turn on the lights, it'd be a chick in the bed, and Nino over there in the dark. Mm-hmm. But Nino was in the room for a reason. You know what I'm saying? But, you know, don't, it's it's just that, you know. But overall, in general, the movie, the filmmakers did an awesome job. You know what I'm saying? I think that, you know, I, I think that it's just hard not having the real people tell these stories. You know what I'm saying? And I get it. I and I, But I'm tired of the wrong people benefiting from it, making the money, you know what I'm saying? Like, it's it's a shame to hear that Tupac moms passed away and didn't really, I don't really know whether she really wholeheartedly supported the film mm-hmm. before she passed away, but, you know, you hear stories, his brothers and them, you know, the outlaws and them, you know, it's, it's a, you know, and I feel the same way, you know what I'm saying? Like, you know, when it came to the Biggie movie, you know what I'm saying? Like, you know, you take Hollywood, Hollywood comes in and, does it for the money you know what i'm saying and it's like man okay but we're not going to tell that story Mm -hmm. i don't want to i don't want to see that story i don't want you to be like from the eyes of the manager you know what i'm saying unless the manager was there from the you know how you gonna tell a movie from when you came into his life after he sold okay (laughs) (laughs) You know what I'm saying? And you're the center point of the story. And it's mm-hmm. like, come on, man. Hey, you got to be serious. You know mm-hmm. what I'm saying? Like, 
just to, to set the record clear, did Biggie have anything to do with the shooting of Tupac? Any one of the shootings? A person who who's just new to the story or a younger cat, mm -hmm. I feel like the All Eyes on Me movie left that open or left people yeah, to believe. Yeah, but that's why I have a problem with mm -hmm. it, though, self, because it's inaccurate. Mm -hmm. but, but it's inaccurate for the, the, the movie part of it. You know what I'm saying? Like, everybody who really know, know what happened. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Like, it's amazing how... There's so much, and it's it's I, I, I just don't get it. I don't get how, um, and I know that how you know we got duped the, the media and all people. We got tricked into Donald Trump, so I know mm -hmm. you could be tricked. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? So you, but you can't keep doing it because you're making money off the lie, and people, you know, you still. It's like Mano and Wack. You know what I'm saying? Like. I'm looking at this shit and saying, yo, y'all, y'all gotta be kidding me. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Like, since when have y'all not took and said, man, listen, man, I I'm tired of looking at my my these these young homies and saying, yo, you look just like your dead father. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. If we don't start really telling the truth, you know what I'm saying? A lot of cats die over lies. Mm -hmm. And nah, we not living by that no more. I'm not I'm not allowing people to live by that. Tupac and Biggie was friends. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? The 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 fucking music business killed both of them. Mm -hmm. Money and greed and all of the people that are associated with money and greed mm -hmm. killed Tupac and Biggie. Ain't no they ain't kill each other. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Nothing that they did killed each other. Encouragement, influence. When you make a movie and you say, Oh man, soon as Pac. All them dudes were standing off there. He never saw the man. Mm -hmm. Seizing them was running downstairs because they man was coming up to the studio to get high with them. Not, yo, Tupac, the our enemy. Not mm -hmm. Tupac. He was like, yo, what floor y'all on? We was all in the studio mm -hmm. on another floor doing Junior Mafia music. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Just so happened, they caught him. They caught him slipping. You... You know, you you know the you know who you hanging out with. You know the rules. You know what I'm saying? I caught got caught slipping. It's, everybody get caught slipping. You get mm -hmm. caught slipping. John F. Kennedy got caught slipping, mm -hmm. <laughs> and he was the president. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? So don't give me that shit about. You know what I mean? But at the end of the day, man, it's all a lie, and we gotta stop lying about Tupac and Biggie. You know what I'm saying? If y'all wanna say Suge and Puff Daddy, y'all say that. But take. Tupac and Biggie out of the equation because mm -hmm. they had nothing to do with each other's murder. Mm -hmm. Absolutely nothing. You know what I'm saying? And that's that's unfair. It's unfair to them. It's unfair to their legacy. It's unfair to the, the new blood. Like I said, referring back to Wack and Mano, Brooklyn against the West Coast, I don't support that shit. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? I don't support it because it's still over the same conversation. It's over a lie. Okay. It's over a fucking lie. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Like, no, they didn't have beef. No big didn't set them up. No this, no that, no that. Like, let's say for a young mind, they say, okay, um, all right, Biggie didn't do it, then who did? You're going to always have a, you know, well, what really happened and people start to speculate. But when you force, when you push the lie, mm -hmm. you, you know, that's all they have. There's no retraction from that, especially if you keep addressing it and easing it in there and subliminally making people think that that's the reason why it happened. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? You do an autobiography that says, oh, shit, he really did set him up. Mm. Well, I feel like that, <laughs> that movie did imply that. Right. I, I agree that. And uh -huh. it was absolute falseness. Mm -hmm. It's not it's not the truth. And that's you know, that's it's it's bad. It's even bad to be talking about. You know what I think? I think that Funk Master Flex got paid to bring Tupac's name back for marketing because they needed to promote the movie. Right? Mm. See see how easy that was? 
see how people are going to say, oh, man, Flex got paid. Oh, man, he wasn't serious. Mm -hmm. But it's, that's, that's how the media works, man. Mm -hmm. Anything you can, I can't. Only way people are going to hear a traction like that is now Flex got to get me on the show. And he got to be like, oh, can you explain that I didn't get paid and I was serious? Flex, I believe you. You were serious. Mm -hmm. I believe that in your heart because I get that emotional mm -hmm. when I'm talking about my nigga. I'm just, I just have it under control because, like I said, you can't. It's too many people still glorifying it and pushing the agenda and making a lot of money off it. You know what I'm saying? And they, they ain't get my new company is called Residual Entertainment. You want it, you're going to give me money forever off of it. Mm -hmm. Or you can't get it. Mm -hmm. Period. <laughs> y'all can, they lying to y'all. The music business is put it online, press in, go to PayPal to buy it. Don't let Atlantic, Sony, Universal, they don't exist anymore. They're lying to you. They're lying to you. Put it online and sell it. Talk to self. Get it played on the radio. <laughs> Call your homies. Get it put on Instagram. You don't need them at all. They lying to you. And we're trying to figure out how we don't need them making movies. Y'all call me when y'all figure out how to make movies on your phone. Because <laughs> we cutting out the middleman. <laughs> yeah. Thanks for, for uh, talking with me. Uh. Absolutely. I appreciate you, it. You also, you of the official <laughs> Junior Mafia DJ. Undie is DJ. Uh -huh. Not Junior Mafia. You too many people's DJ. <laughs> official. One time. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs>